Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. Well, today's video certainly is a game. Although, in all fairness, this was a fun game I recorded a little while ago at Command Fest Orlando. Also, if you're a Patreon or Discord member, you already have known, but I released some new merch. I know it took way too long for me to get a logo on a shirt, but I'm proud about how this came out. It's all embroidered right here in my house, and it came out so good. And not only that, I have a second design dropping as well. What's more classic than bolting the bird? And with this sweet hoodie, you can tell everyone you know what you're doing. This was designed by an artist named Art by Alec on Instagram or Glowing Visuals on Etsy. And if you like this design, all of their socials linked down below. I spent a lot of time making this drop as cool as possible. So if you like either one of these designs, check out the shop. I'll have it linked down below. Also, if you like what you see, consider joining our Patreon, as with your help, we can keep producing the videos you enjoy. And if you want to play with us, hop on our Discord. We have an ever-growing community that loves to talk MTG or whatever else strikes our fancy. And we would love to meet new people. All right, block there, kill that. Oh, that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. Starting the game off is Hidden Planet X on Dargo Thrasios. This is a mid-range teamer combo list. It has multiple different wins from a fast Dargo into a Tide Spout, Dockside Flickers, or playing the long game with Thrasios and Seedborn. This deck always has multiple different lines of attacks and can really overwhelm the board. Next up we have Josh, one of our Patreon supporters, with one of his babies, Tevish Thrasios. He actually has three different Tevish lists, and today he's brought out Tevish Thrasios. This is a mid-range Sultai list, playing the best cards and combos available. Whether it be Kinnon and Seedborn Muse, or Villas and Orcish Bowmaster, this is an adaptive deck that can play it fast or slow depending on the situation. In the third spot we have Kenny piloting the Scarab God. Bridging the gap between high power and CDH, this Demir control list has a full suite of counterspells, removal, and board wipes. He aims to leverage the insane late game power of the Scarab God to steal creatures from your opponents, and when in doubt, Thassa's is a tried and true win con. And bringing up the rear is Seth, playing Yuriko. This Demir list uses the insane card advantage engine of Yuriko. And with our return to Kamigawa, she definitely has a few new toys. This deck can really put on some pressure, and with a little top tech manipulation, can take the whole table out with the single swing. But without further ado, let's get on to the gameplay. Seth starts off the game with a snow-covered island and uses it on a Triton Shore Soccer and a Memnite. Hidden as a command tower and uses it on an Elvish Mystic. Josh plays a City of Brass and takes one to gamble. He finds a card and has Kenny randomly discard a Gemstone Mine. Kenny has a Basic Swamp and passes. Seth also has a Basic Swamp and has the combat. He sends the Memnite at Josh who can't block with Seth ninjutsuing in a Yuriko. Josh takes one from combat, and Seth then reveals a Bloodstained Mire. Ending his turn, recasting his Memnite. Hidden plays a Rejuvenating Springs, and has the classic Thrasios Passios. Josh plays an Arid Mesa, cracking it to grab a Badlands. Kenny has a Basic Island and Demonic Tutors. He finds a card to hand, and inconspicuously plays a Mana Crypt. Seth plays and cracks his revealed Bloodstained Mire. He fetches out an Underground Sea and has the combat. He sends a Shore Stalker at Hidden with Yuriko swinging at Kenny. There are no blocks and before damage, Seth ninjutsus in a Dukuchi Silencer. But Hidden doesn't want to lose Thrasios and still before damage, Hidden Lightning Bolts the Ninja. Damage is then had with Josh taking one and Seth revealing an Orborg off the Yuriko trigger. Then, on a second main, Seth recasts his Shore Stalker and ends his turn with a Hope of Girapur. Hidden untaps and plays a City of Brass, with Josh flashing in a Fairy Mastermind at his end step. Josh plays a Training Center and slams down a Thassa's Oracle. The Oracle resolves and, holding priority, Josh casts a Demonic Consultation. Priority is then passed to Hidden, who responds with an offer you can't refuse. Although Josh tries to do just that with the Pact of Negation. Although Hidden is gracious enough to not give up as he deflecting swats the Pact onto his Demonic. 
So you dine on what? <laughs> it's my deck too. <laughs> I don't think you had two. The Thassa's ETB then resolves, and he takes a card off the top three to keep on top. Kenny plays another swamp and is safe from his crypt. For five, he casts a Massacre Girl to absolutely wipe the table of creatures. Seth plays and cracks a Verdant Catacombs. He ends up bolting himself for an untapped Watery Grave, following that up with a Scroll Rack. Hidden has a Fiery Islet as land. I don't have two blue. I have to pay the mana. What? He has to pay the mana. Pick a ball ritual. Yeah. Fuck! So close! I was like, maybe if I draw a Simeon Spirit Guy. Yeah, I don't draw. Hidden decides to just recast Thrasios, passing after that. Kenny plays a command tower and heads to combat, sending the Massacre Girl at Seth for four. Seth plays his revealed Urborg and casts a Soul Ring. I want to see I hope it's the least CDH playable move you've ever seen. Five mana Yuriko. Five yeah. mana Yuriko. I feel like it's better just to like what? throw rap. Eh. Not, not, not exactly. Two. Yeah, not right. exactly what puts in my hand. I, yeah, sir. I want to keep something. Okay. Hidden draws, but he's a mana short from what he wants to do and passes. Kenny untaps and takes three from his crypt. He then sends four at Hidden and passes after that. Seth starts off with combat. He sends Yuriko at Kenny, who doesn't block. But before damage, Seth casts a Mystical Tutor, to which Kenny responds with a Counter Squall. And Seth responds to that with a Scroll Rack activation. He sets one card aside and then casts a Force of Will, exiling an offer you can't refuse. Although looking back at this, he should have just cast the offer. The Mystical Tutor then resolves, and he finds a Temporal Trespass to put on top. Yuriko then connects, and the table takes 11 from the reveal. Seth also then realizes he miscounted his mana, and actually has to pass the Hidden, who, at his end step, cords for a 3-drop. He can't quite go off with Dockside, but it's still the best option, as it ETBs and gets him 3 treasures. Oh, I'm really trying. I'm really... I'm no. really trying to think. The issue with this format is the sheer amount of mess. Well, that and I'm not familiar with these lines specifically. Yeah, so sadly, there that, isn't I can get one drop. My apologies. That'll click that. That'll give me three more. So this is basically three. I can cast oh, it's a non-creature spell. But so that doesn't trigger that. Damn it. Yeah. Well, if he wasn't impressed, you know, he probably won't get impressed. I mean, I saw a Doom thing the in there. You guys are fucking hard to impress, yeah. guys. I mean, no, we well, you have great cards in there. I just don't need any of Nah, casual people be fucking... Like, yeah, yeah. Last year, I would have loved this. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, I city of brass. No. Hidden untaps, spends way too much time thinking about his plays, and ends up just passing. Kenny takes three from his grip and has the combat. He sends the Massacre Girl at Hidden, who takes four. Seth plays a City of Brass and heads to combat. He sends Yuriko at Kenny. There are no blocks, but before damage, Seth activates his scroll rack for a card. He puts the Temporal Trespass back on top and has the table take another 11 off the Yuriko trigger. Then on his second main, he casts a Dothy Voidwalker. And finally, his extra turn spell. Delving away extra cards to help him pay for it. But Kenny does have a response as he casts a C double. Originally, we had thought it would just be a cool idea for him to copy the extra turn spell, but after consulting a judge, with his copy going off first, it would actually let Seth take the extra turn first. So instead, he chooses to copy Hidden Stockside for 5 treasures himself. Seth untaps and scroll racks. He sets aside a card to see another land on top. He doesn't have an open attack, and at his end step, Kenny casts a deadly relic on Hidden Stockside. Hidden does activate Thrasios and bottoms the card. He reveals a Cyclonic Rift and unfortunately he can't keep his Dockside safe. Hidden untaps and casts a Displacer Kitten. Kenny is safe from his Crypt and for 6 casts a Professor Onyx, who down ticks to have his opponent sacrifice a creature with the greatest power. Seth sacks his Dothy with Hidden sacrificing his cat. Kenny then heads to combat and sends the Massacre Girl at Seth for 4. 
Seth activates the scroll rack on his turn and then casts a Phyrexian Walker. Hidden plays a Gaius Cradle's land and doesn't think he has an out. He follows this up with an Invasion of Ikoria where X equals 5, netting him a Seedborn Muse. Kenny and Hidden untap and Kenny is safe from his crypt. He plays an Island as land for turn and casts an Eldest Reborn. Hidden does have response as he activates Thrasios to scry, but bottoms the card to reveal a brain freeze instead. The saga resolves and Hidden has to sacrifice Thrasios, with Seth sacking his walker. Onyx is then upticked for a card, with Kenny heading to combat after that. He sends the Massacre Girl at Hidden, who attempts to Cyclonic Rift it back to hand. Although Seth doesn't want that to happen, and hard casts a Force of Negation. Hidden doesn't want to lose his Seedborn, so he drops the 2. Seth untaps and scroll racks, passing after that. Hidden draws for turn and drops to 1 to cast the Finale of Devastation, where X equals 2. He grabs out a Phantasmal Image, which enters as a copy of Kenny's copied Dockside, with Kenny cracking his treasure in response to only allow Hidden to gain 4 total treasures. Hidden knows he's dead next turn and instead wants to see if he can win, as he casts a Final Fortune. Hidden then moves to his extra turn, draws, and can't make it work, so he concedes. Kenny then takes 3 from his Crypt. He draws his card and gets another lore counter. Seth has to discard with Kenny upticking Onyx to get another card. Kenny then casts a Hostage Taker to clear the way and smack Seth for 5 with his Massacre Girl and Dockside. Seth untaps, scroll racks, and then casts a Reanimate on his Dothy Voidwalker. Kenny does have a response as he casts a Force of Negation, exiling Athassa's Oracle to do so. Although he quickly realizes he just has the mana to cast it, and instead of casting it for free, decides to just pay for it. This triggers Onyx to drain Seth for 2. Seth is out of cards in hand and has to hand the turn over after that. Kenny takes 3 from his crypt and gets the last lore counter on his saga. He steals Seth's Dothy, with the Onyx then being upticked for another card, and Kenny then sends his team at Seth for 7. Seth draws and passes. Although funnily enough, Kenny was hoping he would cast something as he drew a counterspell and is worried about dying to his own mana crypt trigger. Kenny untaps and with the trigger on the stack, we mess up a little. He sacks his Dothy to try and cast his C double to trigger Onyx. Unfortunately, Dothy can only cast cards as opponent's own, and since the C double is his own card, he wouldn't have been able to. But fortunately for him, it doesn't matter as he wins the Crypt Trigger and then heads the combat and sends 7 more at Seth. He then can actually cast the Mystical Tutor and a Counterspell from his hand to double trigger Onyx, draining Seth for his remaining life and winning him the game. And before I get onto the game review, I do want to thank a special Patreon member, Josh Schutt, for his support of the channel. Game review. Well, that was certainly a game. I thought it wasn't going to take nearly that long when Josh took himself out turn 3 with that ill fortune packed negation. But then the game really turned to a halt after that. I kept drawing tutors instead of lands, Seth kept drawing absolutely nothing, and Kenny just kept slamming haymakers and removal, which made it hard for the rest of us to really cobble anything together. But I want to thank everyone that played, and remember, never give up even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.